Hey friend, my name is Chris and here is how to make animated drag and drop like the one you see on the screen right now for your React project. And speaking of React, you would need to have a React project set up to follow along. And then you need to install React Spring and React Gesture modules. We will use the React Spring module for animation and the React Gesture for dragging the element. That said, let's get started by putting something on the screen that we can drag. Add and export an app component in the app.js file. The component should render a container which is going to center its children vertically and horizontally. The container will also take the full height and width of the screen. Next, add another element that will wrap the component we want to drag around. Then render the component which we are yet to create. Create the second component and render only one child div. The div's height should be 48, same as the width. The background should be a gradient that goes from left to right. The front color should be purple while the two colors should be pink. Make the circle rounded, give it a shadow and when you hover, make the shadow bigger. We can test what we have so far on the screen and it looks like everything is working as expected. Now let's add a transition to the shadow so it feels a little more natural. Now that looks much better. We can also reduce the time the transition takes. And finally, we need to give the user a visual feedback that they can grab the element by turning the cursor to grab when you hover over it. Now that you have an element to drag, we need to make it draggable by binding drag events to it. Let's create a variable to store the function return when we call use drag. A call to the returned function, in this case bind drag, would return an object containing the event we can bind on the draggable element. Before we can call use drag, let's import it. And now we can go ahead and call it. It takes a function and the function it takes receives an object containing information about the drag activity. We are interested in how far the object has moved from its original position and offset would give us exactly that. For now, just lock the value of the offset in the console so we can inspect it. And to tie the element to the drag event, spread the object returned from bind drag on the element you want to drag. Now head back to the browser and start dragging. You should see the new location being logged to the console. Now there are no visible changes to the element being dragged though. We could create a state and update the state in the use drag handler and then use the state change to update the UI. This would work but the experience will be janky and unnatural. What we can do instead is use USpring from the React Spring library to animate the update. A call to use Spring can return an array containing two things. The values we want to animate, which in this case is the X and Y location, as well as an API to update these values when we need to. Now the big question is, where is X and Y coming from? Use Spring, which you need to import by the way, can take a function like I mentioned earlier and the function would return an object with X and Y. X and Y can be anything as long as you keep in mind that what you return from the function is what you will get. So if you return the name or if you return a name rather with a string, you would get a name when you call your spring. Now we need to update the position of the object with X and Y. Of course, JSX style prop does not have a valid X and Y property. To animate with React Spring, you need to use the React Spring version of JSX, which also allows you to provide X and Y as valid shortcuts for CSS translate transformations. Nothing will still happen because X and Y are still set to the default values when we drag. To make the numbers move, 
use the API function to update them from the use drag handler. Now we can drag the object around and look at how natural that feels. To recap, we use use drag to listen to when the object is dragged. When it's dragged, we call the API function to let you spring know that the object has been dragged and where it was dragged to. The API function comes from uSpring and the values that API updates are defined in the function returned from calling uSpring. The values are also returned when we call uSpring and we update the UI with these values. Now I hope you found this video very helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.